Canadians are to trust their government, their government needs to trust Canadians. Those are the words of the Prime Minister in 2015. These people, very often misogynistic, racist, women haters, science deniers, the fringe. Same Prime Minister six years later as he fans the flames of an unjustified national emergency. So, Mr. Speaker, when did the Prime Minister lose his way? When did it happen? You right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Conservative Party members can stand with people who wave swastikas. They can stand with people who wave uh, the Confederate flag. We will choose to stand with Canadians who deserve to be able to get to their jobs, who will be able to get their lives back. These illegal protests need to stop, and they will, Mr. Speaker. that the government went from doing nothing to a national emergency. 48 hours into using the measures, 48 hours without providing Parliament with a justification. So my question is simple. When will the Prime Minister admit that he's lost control of the situation, that he's lost control of his country, that he's lost control of his caucus, and that he's lost control of his leadership? Mr. Speaker, I've never seen such shameful and dishonourable remarks coming from this Prime Minister. My great-grandfather flew over 30 missions over Nazi Germany. My great-great-uncle's body lies at the bottom of the English Channel. There are members of this Conservative caucus who are the descendants of victims of the Holocaust. For the Prime Minister to accuse any colleague in this House of standing with the swastika is shameful. I'm giving the Prime Minister an opportunity. I'm calling on him to unreservedly apologize for this shameful remark. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. Canadians deserve their freedoms back. Mr. Speaker, these illegal blockades that have continued to interfere with people's livelihoods, to interfere with people's, uh, people's daily lives, uh, have... I have to uh, interrupt the Honourable Prime Minister, so ask everyone to calm down so we can hear the calm answer. Down. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The steps that we are taking are important and measured to restore order and freedoms to Canadians in this country. That is exactly what we are doing. Well, member for Sturgeon River, Parkland. Mr. Speaker, the lack of an apology from that Prime Minister speaks volumes. I have given this Prime Minister an opportunity to retract a shameful remark where he would accuse any honourable member of this House to stand with a swastika. As I said before, we have colleagues who are the descendants of victims of the Holocaust. I'm giving the Prime Minister one more chance. Will he apologize to all members of this House? That's the right honourable Prime Minister. the members of the Conservative Party are calling to, uh, to us to take more action over the past two weeks on this. Uh, they continued to stand with and encourage these illegal blockades. Mr. Speaker, uh, Canadians uh, are watching carefully and see exactly where the Conservative politicians who've stood with uh, those blockades uh, are standing. We will stand on the side of Canadians who deserve their lives back, who deserve their livelihoods back. Member for Sturgeon River, Parkland. My apologies, Mr. Speaker. I didn't write these out. But the fact is, I don't know how any member of the government caucus can stand by this Prime Minister when he accuses honourable members of this House of standing with a swastika. I'm calling on all members of the Liberal caucus to denounce the Prime Minister. I have given him two chances to apologize. He has refused to apologize. Mr. Prime Minister, apologize. Now we have a point of order, uh, the Honourable Member for Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, I am a strong Jewish woman and a member of this House and a descendant of Holocaust survivors, and I have never made to, I've, it's never been singled out, and I have never been made to feel less, except for today when the Prime Minister accused me of standing with swastikas. I think he owes me an apology. I'd like an apology, and I think he owes an apology to all members of this House. Regina 
I compel? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I just want to carry on with the point that was made by my colleague from Thornhill. Uh, you'll know, Mr. Speaker, that when comments made in the House are so injurious, so insulting, and so unparliamentary, they rise to the level of a question of privilege, Mr. Speaker. And as you know, you have the ability to rule on that immediately. What the Prime Minister did, I won't even go into the hypocrisy of the man who did blackface so often he can't remember it, accusing somebody else of doing anything remotely racist, but his comments made to a Jewish member of this House are beyond par unparliamentary. They are reprehensible, and I would ask that you rule that this rises to the level of a question of privilege, and I am prepared to move the appropriate motion, Mr. Speaker. I will take that under advisement and return to the House uh, should I see fit. Matt Kingston. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I don't think we should engage in an exercise in comparative victimhood credentials here. Um, I will observe that uh, I too have Jewish ancestors. My grandmother was born in Bialystok. She came here, fortunately, before the Holocaust occurred. But of the 10,000 Jewish residents of Bialystok, when she left, only 500 survived World War II. I would just say that uh, it's not for the member opposite, although I know she spoke sincerely to speak out on this. It is for the Prime Minister to come back and retract his words. The Prime Minister is very good at apologizing for acts that took place before he was born by people he wasn't involved in. It's time for him to take responsibility for his own words and uh, apologize for what he said. Oh,